subjective experience is the strangest, weirdest, most enigmatic thing we know about. What I mean by subjective experience includes things like the blue color we see in the sky, the odor we experience from a rose, feelings like pain or the rush of joy or the ache of grief. By subjective experience, I'm not referring to the mechanics of sensation. Those are, of course, pretty well understood. We see the color blue, for example, when light with wavelengths in the range of about 450 to 500 nanometers arrives at our eyes, triggering cone cells in our retinas to send signals to the occipital lobes of our brain and beyond. These are the circumstances of seeing blue light, but notice that this sort of description in no way explains the actual experience of blueness. That's very mysterious, and towards the end of this video I'll give what few hints we have about how it might possibly come about. But subjective experience is so familiar, so close to our sense of ourselves, so fundamental to how we perceive and interact with the world, that it might be difficult to appreciate really how truly strange it is. In my experience, Sometimes people don't get it, even after a careful explanation. But if you think hard and long about it, I think you'll come to appreciate that there really is something very odd going on here. What we're considering is the true mystery of consciousness. Often consciousness is described in very vague terms that makes it difficult to know what is and isn't being meant. For example... A definition of consciousness might involve self-reference, the ability to think about yourself. But that's really not very mysterious. It's not hard to imagine even a computer program that could consider its own design and could consider its own data. And so that isn't what's really mysterious. But does a computer feel? Can a computer experience an odor? I think we generally think not. Let's consider a thought experiment to explore this further. Suppose a microelectronic device is developed that fully replicates the function of a neuron in your brain, but using semiconductors instead of biochemical molecules. Now, we surgically replace one of your actual neurons with this device. Say, somewhere in the cortex of your left parietal lobe. Will this change your subjective experience in any way? It seems not. It's such a tiny change. And by design, it's actually meant to represent no functional change at all. What if we replace two neurons or ten? You can already see where this is going. We continue to replace neurons with devices until they are all replaced throughout the entire brain. What we would have, of course, is a computer functioning just like a brain. The question is, does this computer have subjective experience? To be sure, it can detect the presence of molecules in the air that are released by roses, the same molecules that your nose detects. And it could even claim that it has uh, an experience of the rose scent, which it enjoys, but does it really? And how could we know? Well, nobody knows how to determine whether subjective experience is happening outside of themselves. Does a cat have feelings? We don't really know, although my guess would be yes. But how about a worm? Or a spider? Or an amoeba? I think most of us would guess that at some level of simplicity, the ability to have subjective experience goes away. But the truth is, we really don't know. And what about other people? Again, it seems very plausible that other people would have feelings and experience colors like blue and odors like that of a rose 
just like you do, but it's not impossible that some people might be what are described as philosophical zombies. They look like they're having experiences and they claim that they're having experiences, but how would we really know if they are? There seem to be only two possible ways that subjective experience might come about. The first is, in a way that we just know nothing about, they emerge somehow mechanically out of the workings of the brain. And if that's true, then a computer that replicates all the functions of the brain would have exactly the same subjective experiences, would have sensations and feelings just like you do. If this is the answer, and I suspect that it is, that means that the sensations we have, like the red of a rose, is actually, in some sense that just completely evades us, an illusion. It doesn't actually exist. We, in some sense, only believe that we see the red of the rose and tell ourselves that we see the red of the rose. And if that's true, perhaps the best way to understand it further would be to improve our understanding of what these sensations, what these subjective experiences are good for. The fact that we see the color blue, smell the odor of a rose, how does that help us function more effectively than we could if we were some sort of unconscious zombie that processed information in the same way, but didn't subjectively experience it? The only other possible explanation that I see is that subjective experience somehow shows us that there's more to the mind than simply the workings of the brain, that there's aspects of experience that are not at all rooted in our current understanding of physics and chemistry and biology. Some very prominent scientists and philosophers argue that this is the case. I personally doubt this, but I don't really think we can rule it out. Progress in this direction, I think, would involve better explanation of what that something else is and not simply pointing into the dark. Share what you think in the comments below. Is subjective experience a result of biological processes that we don't understand yet, but probably will someday? Or does it point to something else altogether? And if so, what?